That's crazy. I didn't know you were a glasses girl. I was a glasses girl back in the day. That's why I should do Chelsea lately. Zero. I don't like that it says zero. The guy that I'm dating now, his phone number comes up as his name or delete because he's in my phone. He's been in my phone as both his name and the word delete. So they're like, it could be delete. Yeah, it's up to you. <laughs> don't get to do, you don't get to co-op my life. They're just piggybacking. They're just, they're they're just, just piggies. Like piggy hacking. Hey guys, welcome to Annie Wood. We have Jordan Jensen on the pod today. I right now am on set in New York on location, shooting a very special scene in a very special surprise movie. Look out for that. I have shows coming up. I have Annie Wood and Friends at the Comedy Store. We have John Mulaney and a lot of other amazing comedians. So grab your tickets now because that is going to sell out. That's April 16th. I also have April 19th and 20th, I'm in Spokane, Washington. April 26th and 27th, Fort Worth, Texas. May 9th, another Annie Wood and Friends with a very special used-to-be ginger comic, I believe. It's going to be on that. And we have May 24th and 25th in Toronto, Canada. June 28th and 29th in Jacksonville, Florida. October 10th in Naples, Florida. Love you guys. Enjoy this app. Oh, I love me some Jordan. Welcome to Annie Wood. Tim Dillon just told me that I need to get filler. He's so mean. He does. He told me that I was, it's, he's saying it funny, but he's eating ice cream when he's doing it. So it's like, I know he's in a vulnerable place. Like a fat guy oh, eating ice cream. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, totally. So he's, he's somewhere in his childhood Yeah. He's when like, he's eating that ice cream. You're a bitch. And he's like, has anyone told you how old you look? I was like, never. That's insane. You look younger. You're, you're 40 years old. I'm 32 and I look 55. You're 32 years old. You're youngy. Well, this is fun. Eight years from now, where do you think you'll be? On a farm. You think you'll quit comedy? Or you'll just live on a farm and commute? Or you'll just be doing shows on a farm? I don't know. I don't want to be like the, 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 you know, woman on stage being like, I guess 40, I'll probably be still doing it. But do I want to be like, you know, the Roseanne Barr in the future? That's what I always think no, about. No, no, I think of Joan Rivers, who was always funny. That's good. She was always funny. And her, her, it was funny, funny, funny. Yes. Funny, funny, funny. Like funny, funny. But did you watch that documentary with her? No. She had a documentary and she was sad. Was she sad? She was sad. She wanted, you know, everyone, no matter what they get, they just want the other thing they're not getting. So she really wanted like a claim as an actress. Mm. She wanted people to be like, you're an amazing actress. So even though she was like the top comedian and she had her own talk show and everything, it's, you know. But she was an influential actress for Roseanne. No. She wanted to be like the other one, not Roseanne. Oh, you think I'm fighting for Roseanne's abilities? Yeah, who are you fighting abilities? for? No, Joan Rivers. Oh, she No, no, never... I think Joan Rivers. I don't think Roseanne. Right, 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 right. When I'm older, I go Joan Rivers. I think Tig Notaro. Tig. But how old is Tig? She's not that old. <laughs> Tig's like 39. Yeah. But she did the thing where she just like cranked out good shit made enough money was in a couple blockbusters and then had twins with the love of her life and then dipped i think yeah. that's sick she, she got rid of it she slapped off the twins and then had other twins she's 53 yeah that's still pretty yeah uh but do you think that they want to do comedy and they just feel like it was too much work i don't think i listened to take extensively and i don't think she ever really was that into it i think she accidentally was super funny and would find herself on stage and be like all right i'm doing this now yeah she did push that that uh Agenda. thing around she pushed remember the one thing yeah she was pushed the that's it i'll have to listen to more tig because i don't really know i don't know tig's origin story i w i listened to professor blast off with her and kyle dunnigan and then oh when I yeah met kyle i yeah. started short circuiting like more than when i've met louis or Chappelle or anybody when kyle dunnigan walked in i was like hi <laughs> daddy it was really well weird. yeah did you have you ever seen caddy daddy no caddy daddy is a sketch that kyle and i did together really mm -hmm. oh my god I love that man. Back in the Zay. Yeah, Kyle's cool. Not Jewish. I was just thinking about how Jewish he seems. He's like Jewy, neurotically Jewish. They're all comics seem Jewish. It's crazy don't they? when they're not. Yeah. I was watching one of the Selling Sunsets. It's I don't know what. It's like not Selling Sunset, but it's like one of those type of shows where they're selling real estate. And I kept going. I was watching it with Tim Dillon. I kept going, is that guy gay? Is that guy? He goes, he's Jewish. And I go, oh, my God. I'm being harassed right now by a Jewish gay broker. And I've never been more bigoted in my life. Like, it's crazy how... Harassing you to get out of place? I'm already in the apartment, but we were going to do a... I was going to take over my friend's lease, but now he's trying to broker the deal. So, so I have annoying. to pay a broker fee. But he's gay and Jewish, and it's like crazy how much I want to say 
Well, to his face. I mean, it's for Jew. I've never felt such a strong urge to just be like, you're a f- and Jewish. And are you crazy. are you going to pull like a Palestine, like free Palestine on it, too? No, I'm I'm going to I got a lawyer. I got, Ooh, I have a another Jewish. A lawyer, I have yeah. another Jew yeah. here. Yeah. I see your Jew and raise you a Jew. And what are you? You're not Jewish. No, I'm Danish and Italian. Jensen. Was, was there a religion? No. No, God, no. Religious. I don't know. You have lesbian moms. I could see you being like a Unitarian or something. Yeah, we had a Unitarian church. Okay. But that's just where I got all my clothes. Really? Hand me downs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my dad and mom were like, we weren't allowed to celebrate Christmas because it was religious. Like, it was, they're very against God. They're religiously anti religious. My mom is Sam Harris's like spawn. Now, what is Sam Harris is Jewish? He is Ashkenazi Jew. Yeah. We got to get. I'm in love with him. I think you, you are. President. Yeah, I am in love with Sam Harris. Have you met him? I have seen him, and yeah, I took a picture of him and my mom together, and I said hi. My you mom's. did like a meet and greet. Yeah. Don't you sometimes feel like as a comic we could get our way in, and then when you do the meet and greet, you're like, oh, I put myself into the meet and greet. Did you present yourself as a comedian or just as a? I wasn't anybody then. It was when back I in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was just like a doing produce shows around the city. I would have been like, I produce shows around the city. Yeah, yeah. I did do that to Jonah Hill one time when I ran into him. I was like, I'm on my way to an open mic right now. I'm a comedian. And he was like, where's the open mic? And I was like, you can't go. You can't see this. And he was like, okay, I'm not going to go with you. And I was like, okay. That's amazing. What if that had been a, what if he came to the open mic and just ruined everything? There was, oh, it was Emily Heller. Do you know Emily Heller? No. She's moved to LA and is a writer, but I think she's won a bunch of Emmys and stuff. She did very well for herself. But she, her sister was married to... Was like a director, but was married to one of the Lonely Island guys, I think. So we would just be doing an uh, open mic at the Creek in the Cave, and um, the guy from Portlandia, what's his name? Fred Armisen would just mm. be in the audience. It was like, Emily, can you chill oh, with bringing yeah. like, comedic celebrities to our fucking open mics? Right, yeah. It's like, Emily, you bitch, like, what are you doing? Uh huh. I was literally working like I did my dog eating me out joke. I was like literally doing like a peanut butter. I'm like, come on. This was my big shot. The peanut butter thing. I was walking around with my dog and I was carrying like some protein thing. And the guy was like, is that peanut butter? And I was like, you're disgusting. Stop that. It's like, do you like your coffee black? It's like the same thing. Yeah. I think. What no, it, we, what? Okay, okay, no. I have a, oh, it's just, fun to make them. Go, okay, switch. Stay, switch. Keep it on me. But, keep it on me. Okay. Oh, okay. that's a smart way to do it. What kind of dog do I have? She's a little Mexican mutt. She's okay. the best dog in the entire world. It's fucked up. White or black? She's definitely black. She okay. hates cops and loves black people. <laughs> loves them. Like I have to pull her off homeless people. My dog's racist towards Hispanics. Really? But he's from Mexico, so I think I think some stuff might have happened on the way over. My dog is not racist towards anybody, but the other day she was outside my house. It was like 4 a.m. after shows, and I was walking her, and she was like, oh. she was like this. She's like a tiny dog, and she was going, Roo. and I was like, what is the problem? What's going on? She and says the N-word. Guy, <laughs> yeah, and there was a guy standing there with like a baseball cap, like kind of near my house, and I was like, it's just a guy. He's fine. And she was like not passing him. And then finally I, I like start getting her to go and he turns and he goes, are you Jordan Jensen? Oh and no. And she was like, Ooh. she was like simp. simp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she's, yeah, totally. So she's against any simpers. I, I know. It does still feel good though, doesn't it? But it's too close to your house. You don't want them to be near your house. When it just connected. wasn't complimentary. It wasn't oh. like, oh, I love your stuff. It was like, are you Jordan Jensen? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, oh, I've seen you. And I was like, okay. Because they, they're know? trying to be cool. Yeah, they're trying yeah, to be yeah. Cool. How about the people that come up after shows and they go, I thought you were cool. And they point out the tables that didn't like you. You're like, well, I didn't know. I thought I f- yeah. had every single person. And they'll be like, that person hated Sorry you. Sorry about the audience tonight. When I hear that, I want to oh. f- myself. I, was, I just did one of the worst gigs of my life. Where was it? Appleton, Wisconsin. What happened? A woman tried to attack me on stage. <laughs> it's happened many times. I really piss people off. But she was like, she was like drunk talking to the, her, this guy. And she was like, yeah, you know, while like right next to the stage. And I was like, what are you talking about? Why don't you just tell me what you're talking about? Yeah, and then of we course. Can we can. Yeah. Yeah. And she goes, I wanted to go to a hot shop. And I was like, and then I roasted her. And then I talked to them about their relationship. And they've been on and off for like 10 years. And I asked her. And then I said, I was like, I know I'm like you. I get in and out of relationship over and over again. And I was like, do you, do you have issues? Do you, are you close to your parents? And she was like, yes. And I was like, are you close with your dad? And she goes, no. And I was like, okay, so there it yeah. is. And then she just turned, went into the bathroom. Like she, I saw her go dark. Like I saw her be like, this is, I can utilize this as trauma mm-hmm. and get this guy 
to feel bad for me. And I was like, what? Were you raped by your dad? What happened? What's going on? And then she went into the bathroom, was like scream, screaming. And then two other tables of women went in there to help her. Apparently, she was drunk on the floor screaming while two other women were chanting over her like a witchy calm down chant. Oh, my God. And And the women didn't know her. It was a different table? No, it was them all trying to help. And I just was like, I hate my gender. And then at the back, they went to the back of the room and then she stood there the whole show until finally she was like, I'm going to go her up and then i guess the security person was just like absolutely not the only thing that's ever hurt me was a black woman once came up stood up and called me racist and i was like Mm. and i was not i was like she would they were ordering her not they her table yeah was ordering very loudly and i just had to do crowd work with them because they were being so loud and then the attempt of me saying that they were being loud she took as me being racist wow I mean, black people. Are I didn't even black. say this isn't a movie. I didn't even go like this isn't a movie. I didn't say anything that was even like I just and I was like oh, but I was like you know I really I still am looking for the. Black I'm trying to vote. do a joke right now about how black people just simply are allowed, but it's because white people have been scheming since the beginning of time. Like you know what I mean? Like yeah. black people are just like hollering. White people are quiet because they're plotting. Because they're being like, yeah, we're, yeah, we're gonna steal out of their potatoes. You know. Yeah, it is interesting. It, it's interesting that like there's like Neil Brennan's that have made their like a a lot of their career has been like white people are like this black people are like this and like burrow can do it like but it's like i don't know i'm like i didn't even I don't women know. yeah we ain't allowed to do shit. i know we really are we're only allowed to make fun of men but they and then they also are mad at us when we do that too yeah i'm trying to think of an example there was something recently that happened where i'm like what? I don't there's no understand. women who are being like you know pushing louis jokes or yeah. doing any sort of like black people yeah. I'm trying. That's like my goal is to do things like that is to but then I get really upset when people freak out in the audience. My favorite joke is about ra- like one of my favorite jokes that I have is about cultural appropriation where I'm like, oh, my my black friend told me my hoops are too big. That's cultural appropriation. And then I say, I mean, I understand where she's coming from. I did slide them off her neck. She's African. Nice. And then I do like a little act out where her neck. It was like a load bearing one. She was taking a nap. And I think it's like really funny and not and like fun misdirect and stuff but it's that's great but i don't know where people are getting offended like I don't, i'm like it's like national geographic i just don't know where the offensive part is maybe i'm just not like it's landing just a hot it white lady saying black at all is offensive. yeah it's crazy well guys i do take my coffee like i take my men <laughs> <laughs> yeah. half asian but if you marry a black guy then you can just talk about black people forever if you have a black husband, then you can literally do a full blackout. Now, is that what happened which is a black to? Act out. <laughs> <laughs> black out. <laughs> is that what happened? Lisa Lampanelli kind of stopped. I had her on Trash Tuesday years ago, and it was fun. But she kind of stopped doing roasty jokes. But she, I think, she was saying like the N word on stage, and I think maybe people thought she was dating black guys, and then she wasn't, and that's where the where the problem but began. why does that matter that you're because um, i think she was saying she was oh oh yeah. but people make it up on stage yeah totally a lot mm-hmm. i have an entire trans girl that's a friend of mine made up it's a, a mixture of a, like three different people and people are like who is that girl and i'm like she does not it's exist. zach amigo <laughs> yeah yeah 100%. we're in the studio yeah what's the name of the studio he wanted me to oh this is uh, NewYorkPodcasting.com for studio rental if you're in New York City and have a dream. NYC Podcasting. I What did I say? What's that? Is gas oh, struggling? NYC. You got to do plugs? We got to plug gas. I think that they just, it's, you don't know Lewis for as long as I do. Lewis is a, he's always barking. He's, Lewis is, he's selling. He's a seller. He's yeah. a salesman. Mm-hmm. He's always selling. He always sees an opportunity to promote, to plug. But he did give me the this for free. That's nice. On his own birthday. What are you doing in town? You're doing a. I'm doing a scene in a movie. I don't. I don't know if I'm allowed to say what the okay. movie is, but That's it's awesome. very exciting. And I just got the sides, and there's so many lines. Really? So many lines. When do you have to f- shoot? Wednesday. Okay, today's Monday. You have very yeah. little time. I have very little time, and I have to do your podcast. Oh yeah, that'll be fun. We can practice. We can practice. It's going to be cool though. It's exciting. I'm playing a podcaster, so it should. It's right here. I'm practicing right now. That's great. Um, by the way, welcome to Annie Wood. This is Annie Wood episode like 70. Todd usually says the episode 70 something. Oh, we have Jordan Jensen back. Hi. This is New York. I'm here with the film and 
And it's very exciting. And it was last minute. Thank you so much for, be, for being able to do this. Yeah. I'm glad I was in town. I do wish, I feel like, I wish if we lived in the same place, I feel like, not that we would do a podcast together, but we would do, we would podcast a lot together, I think. Yeah. I've been trying to do a solo pod along with being Ian, and it is tough. I had to quit trash Tuesday. It's too much. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. And, and it sounds crazy to say it because. It's one hour. It sounds absolutely insane. And people are listening to us while they're like in their weird hard labor jobs, but it's like. It's hard to explain, but you just energetically you are zapped. Yeah, I'm on the road zapped. all the time. How many weekends are you on the road? Most weekends. Yeah, I'll take like I have a wedding this weekend, and then I have another, and then I took another weekend off to just be in New York. But most weekends I'm on the road. Whose wedding is it? My best friend Harry. Are you going to be in it? He's having nobody in the wedding, but I am giving a speech. Okay, and do you feel pressure to be funny? I do. Always, you love it. Yeah, of course, me too. But I said I'm not writing it out. Whenever I write anything out, a set list or anything, it doesn't go well. So I'm just gonna free ball it. I I every wedding speech I've ever and I have given a lot of wedding speeches, I you it's better to just ad lib. You gotta ad lib. We're yeah. not no scripted people. No, I'm not somebody's adorable sister who's like, you know, I remember when my sister was my, back in the day when she was my sister, but now she's your wife. So that's you know a different thing. Welcome to the family, Jared. You yeah. Know. This is so yeah, oh, and or the roasts that are like way too mean because the people actually don't know how to do it. Yeah, to like, I this, he used to only date fat bitches and like she's still there. Like that. The men there. always get to do the fun roast. My yeah. friend had me do a roast, but she was like, "Don't bring up cocaine," and I was like, "Well, you're a cocaine addict." And she was like, "Don't bring up." So, well, the only way it's going to be a white wedding is if I bring up the coke. I know. Even him in the vows said that said in the vows, and we all know that whatever Sarah ha always has her little bag of tricks with her and I was like he's allowed to bring it up in the vows but I can't bring it up in the roast that's insane it well maybe the parent they don't want the parents to know but it's also like I'm a, my friend was like don't bring up that I smoke cigarettes I'm like we're so old my friend's yeah. like 35 years old I'm like what are we doing that's crazy you like smoke in your parents face at that age are you gonna Blows have a wedding head. I am going to have a wedding. I want to do a special first because I just want to be able to focus. I want to have an exciting, fun time putting a wedding together. And I've never, I was never, I've never imagined getting married. I just love Todd. Yeah. And now I'm like, oh, it makes sense to get married. Yeah. I want to be an old bitch around this guy, which is, he is 10, 11 years younger than me. So it's, there is going to be a time when I look a lot older than him. I don't know if that's true because you look so young now. There's, you've seen those old ladies that are just like, they look young, but they have gray hair. And yeah. You just dye your hair. I wonder if I start getting stuff done if I'm going to look old. Don't get stuff done. I don't have, I, I have never felt the urge to go get stuff. I've never looked at myself in the mirror and go, I got to get stuff done. I have like a little line. I like it. Yeah. I don't feel bad don't about do aging. It. I don't feel bad about I have a giant gray streak of hair that's coming oh, that's in now. Cool. It's like a shock. It's like storm. Well, they say it's like from trauma and not from aging, which is funny. Like if you get one shock, it's just because something bad <laughs> that's, happened. That's so funny. I know. Yeah. And I'm always like, oh, I like your one thing. I know. Some I know. It's just been. Yeah. Just molested. In yeah. Yeah. Hole. It's crazy. No. Um, but I, are, you're going to have a big comedy wedding. Uh, yes. I don't know. You're going to have pictures that are taken like David LaChapelle kind of style. Right. Where let's like, you know. Pull up a David LaChapelle. 100%. This is what your wedding's going to look like. Can you pull it up? They can. Give him a sec. He's got to spell LaChapelle. Man, I just He's got to learn French. And his reflection was on my face and it really <laughs> You had a full goatee. You never thought you'd get married. I just never. I honestly just wasn't thinking about it. Wow. I was always in an anxious relationship that I wasn't truly happy in. Mm-hmm. And trying to do comedy. Or I was like a drunk. Ooh, that would be fun. Yeah, I like that. That's what I'm picturing. That would be fun. Yeah. Yeah, I think I would want to blow it out. I, sometimes like, oh, let's just get married at UPS. That would be funny. His that friends got married at UPS. It's hilarious. That's great. You just go to a UPS tour. And what do you do? I think just they're like, while they're like sending people's boxes, like, hold on, hold on, hold on. And then they come over and they're just like, okay, do you take, I don't know. That's great. But I thought that was so funny. It it's like so funny. either it's got to be a blowout or it's got to be like. At Staples. Exactly. Yeah. I think you're going to do a blowout. It'll be fun. Yeah. I would like to be able to focus on it, but I just have to do a special. I've never done a special. When is your, what is your plan for a special? Well, I asked Bonnie McFarlane to, to direct it. Nice. Which feels good. Yeah. And then I know who's going to DP it. So I kind of have like. 
it's settled. And then I want to do it in LA so I can have my makeup artist and all my people that I do. You have a to. makeup artist? Yes, Nova. She does Chrissy Teigen. She does uh, Olivia Munn. She what does, does she do you for? Sometimes I for photo shoots if I want to do it. Sometimes I'll do like a big blowout photo shoot. Wow. And my friend Isa Perez does it. Hi, Isa. She's so good. She's really talented. And she comes in from Miami. So whenever she's in town, I'll do like a shoot. And wow. she's just really good. So I don't want to, I want to have, get the best of it. I want to have that. I want to have. It's the, fun. I can't take photo shoots. I always hide behind something or I need some prop to. Well, Isa will f with you. Isa, you're a bitch. Okay. Everybody knows you're a bitch. Isa will like and be like, stop, put your arm down. She'll like wow. in the way you would like it. That's nice. I think. Yeah. I think in the way that settles with someone like I you. I can't put that much makeup on or anything or I look like a trans man. Right no, they, there. well, I've had people, if you go to Sephora or something and get a makeup, they will fully trans you. They trans you? Yeah, they trans you. You don't want to be trans. No, no, no. I did this Vice thing and they made me look like a weird. Did you? Can you yeah. pull it out? Is it on the line? I don't know. Is it with the Stefano? I don't even know. Pull up Jordan Jensen Vice. Vice? Was it this show? Yeah. Oh my God. They made you so reggy. Yeah. My, that shirt well, you look was pretty. just full of holes. Also, by the way, no one was like, let's pull it down over the bra. No, nobody. Nobody at all. And well, that it's always shirt weird. was so inappropriate. You know what this looks like? This looks like me on At Midnight, not After Midnight, the, the old one that was on. Will you look up my name in At Midnight? What is up with After Midnight? Are you doing that? What is that? What's going no, on? No, they. they I, have, I have not done it. Maybe we should try and do it on the Should cinema. we do it together? Yeah. Okay. We should demand that. How do we do that? Marianne Ways, we have a ways to get on your show. Put us together, two girls. Two girls. I know. I would want to do it with like my friends. Yeah, you don't want to do it with someone you don't know. They should just have packs of crews on. You're competitive, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it'll be fun. We'll actually fight each other to win. Yeah. A silly show that doesn't have real Does winners. somebody win? Yes. Oh, then I want to do it. It's gonna I didn't want to do it until now, I know. Like that? Do you know what oh, I mean? Oh, yeah. I used to be a glasses girl. That's crazy. I didn't know you were a glasses girl. I was a glasses girl back in the day. That's why I used to do Chelsea lately. Zero. I don't like that it says zero. Yeah, that's... I won a lot. I did used to win. It was with Chris Hardwick. Did you have... Do you have... You wear contacts every day? No, I just don't... I just don't acknowledge that I need glasses. I really do believe in hypnosis and you can just decide you're fine. Really? Yeah, it's like driving's probably a little iffy. I mean, if I got pulled over without my glasses, maybe I'm in jail. I don't know. Is it bad? No, it's not. It really isn't. It's like I can't read that far away. Okay. But that's it. You can see the shape of a stop sign. I'm fine. Yeah. I know what a stop sign means. And that my Tesla does have like a, it shows you where to go. I can't believe you have a Tesla. Did I drive you around in it? Yeah. Yeah. It was nice. They go fast. I should let you drive it. Do you have a license? Yeah. Next time you can drive it. It's fun to drive. I don't have my motorcycle license and I do be driving a motorcycle. You got to be careful. That guy from gen v what's past. that some kid just some young actor on a show that i actually watched really motorcycle accident yeah well i go pretty slow it only has 250 cc's which i just found out is a pretty substantial breast implant size as well you've been looking at boob jobs no but a woman in the audience was like i have 250 cc's it was like this i it is fun a boob job is really fun and women are for the most part very open with you yeah and because I do feel like they're mine, like I don't mean to be rude, but I'm like, they're mine. Do yes. You? Like you let a doctor cut your nipples off so I can now touch them. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree. And I've, I've never met, man. I've never met a woman that said no, but maybe if it's like, if you get they it wrong, it's a cancer to. one. Like if it's a reconstructive. No, they even might be then wrong. I think they're down with you feeling it. I'm very against all of that shit. Getting it done. I'm against, I'm against. Do you know what I'm, I'm against? I'm against too, but I'm also for when someone's already done it. Yes. Being very like happy for their choice yeah. because- but it's exciting. I had I found a new massage therapist in LA, and then she immediately told me that she was going into surgery to get her boobs uh, removed, and that she would no longer be available to be. I was like, oh, okay. You can't massage her. me without your boobs. She just has a. It's going to be a long. Uh, I would love recovery. to get my tits cut off. Do you want to just do the all of it? The Robbie Hoffman. Oh, yeah, I mean, I would love to just be an amorphous lizard person. I did get plastic surgery. I had like a fanny pack of extra skin down yeah. that I had cut off. Did you keep the skin? That, not allowed, I asked. I kept my dog's balls. That's... They gave them to me in a thing. Nuts. I have them. <laughs> Did you... You really kept them? They yeah, I have them. them. Yeah. My vet was a fan, so I get whatever I want. I don't know if I feel good about neutering my little puppy. I don't want her to be neutered. 
but I have to legally. Oh, you should have her drag her period puss around. I, we both bleed. I do like the little Audi pussies all dogs have. It's so cute. Yeah. They're so cute. She's the cutest dog in the entire world. They're just dragging around, just bleeding. Is she a puppy? Yeah, she's five months. Oh. Yeah. I'm Congratulations. Not Thank you so much. It's really, there's no other life. It's the best thing that's ever happened to me. She sleeps on planes. She goes everywhere with me. She's so fun. I love She poops that. in airports. And are you bringing openers with you all the time? Most of the time, yeah. And they help. I'm done. Really? It's I might wrap. be done too. That's great. It's a wrap. Why is that? It's annoying. That's so interesting. It's annoying. Because you have to hang. It's also, it's like, I, I feel like I'm generous and then there's, there's not all of them, but some of them want more. And then you're like, I don't, I don't know if you know what other people are doing, but they're not doing what I'm doing. Well, what about the, I mean, also I got like a big rig camera, so I just hook it up myself. So now I don't need the feature to help me do that. That's cool. But I usually travel with one of my best friends. But the problem with that is it become it comes into the friendship because then you're like in your hotel room and you're like, I've dedicated this entire day to being alone. And now this other guy's one room over yes, thinking that exactly. I'm icing them out. I know. And they always put them one room over. And I'm like, I don't want you hearing my vibrator. I don't want to be. I don't want you hearing me on a fight. They put, they're like, oh, I put you guys together. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Separate floor. And then it's like, I don't, it's like, I'm so bad at boundaries that it's all my fault. They're not doing anything wrong. They're just following boundaries. my lead. They're following my lead. The move is you get somebody who's way younger. That right. I just had a 22 year old open up for me and it was just amazing. I could just neglect yeah. him and he was Because well, you don't want to have people that are, have been in the career as long as you that aren't at a headlining level because it is weird. It is weird. Yeah. Yeah. But you just get a little young buck who's just happy to be there. Yeah. But I had one, I had a guy that was like doing all my videos and clips and stuff and then he quit comedy. I think I showed him too good of a life and he said, I still don't like it. Wow. And I flew in first friend? class once. I think I messed up. It was an upgrade. It wasn't like I paid for it, but it's like. Yeah. My opener gets a lot of upgrades. I don't know. You fly the openers out? Yeah. You don't? No. See, I think I, that's actually my mistake. Because that's a I lot think of money. It's a lot of money. It's $700. It's so much money. And then I don't think they understand that it's a lot of money and that's just coming out of mine. And then their hotel kind of comes out of our money because it comes from the back end of our deals. Yeah, yeah. And then, The hotel comes out and then you pay them on top of whatever the right. club Right, and then pays. you pay them and you tip them or whatever. You know? Yeah, I do not pay for I say if you want road work, you can come with me, but you're buying your own ticket. I like that because there's a hustle to it and an excitement for the stage time rather than... And I think I have such amazing... Like, I really think that my audience is spectacular and so good and... I'm introducing you to them and I want them to be your fan base now too. And you're getting video of a show that's already hot. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. You take that. But I also am I'm like upfront about it. I'm like, I'm not going to, you got to get there on your own. Unless it's like, like with John Kennedy, sometimes I'll fly him out be j just because he's a little lost pup. And I'm like, all right, let's just, I'll just get you. From Those a to teeth B. are so big. They're so big. He looks like a cartoon character. He's a sweet kid. Yeah. He's the best. I'm alphaing by not following him back. <gasps> That's so cool. Isn't that fun? Yeah. But he knows it's happening. That's great. How has he been doing on the road? I have no clue. I didn't see. I just was on a. What were you guys doing? You were all on a tour. We with... were just coming back from L.A. I just hitched a ride. Oh, you hitched a ride. Yeah. That's awesome. You hitched yeah. a ride here. Yeah. That's nice. It's weird. That's very really... weird. It's good for manifesting. Why? I would like to be the ball. I would like to be the baller. I know. I know what you I mean. I would like to be the baller. But then you run into. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I know. I don't want to say the name because. I don't, I'm not like friends with her and I don't want to be like shading her, but there is a, a very rich female comedian who only does theaters and she makes her, her openers pay their way. And I think that's a little, no weird. way. It's a little weird when it's like, you're making like 50 or well, I don't know what she's making at the theaters, but it's like, but it's boundaries. I have wear this to remind me to have boundaries. Really? Yeah. I got it. My friend has like a crystal shop and I bought it in Tampa. I have no boundaries. I'm really bad at it. I'm working on it, but it feels mean. And then what happens is you overcompensate. Some people just get the the shit end of me trying to have boundaries. I know because then you get mad. Yeah. You flip out. Yep. I know. Today it took everything in me to ask the person I'm dating to walk my dog. I mean, I was in the bathroom like hyping myself up and I really <laughs> had to be here and I had stuff to do and she needed to go out. And I was like, I, if you could walk Coyote, that would be. And he was like, yeah, of course. And I was like, <laughs> Yeah, okay. Well. I know it's worse when it's your, just totally in your own head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't do it ever. It's Luckily, crazy. Todd just does stuff. Well, you guys are like very committed. I'm in a relationship that break, ends and starts. So you're afraid if you ask him the wrong thing, it's over? I'm afraid if I wear the wrong t-shirt, it's over. Yeah. 
That's totally. so funny. Uh, well, better not cut those tits off. Yeah, no, they have to stay. I know. <laughs> Keep the tits. I know. I have a personal trainer and Invisalign now, and I'm like, it's for, it's just for myself. You have Invisalign in now? No, no, I forgot to put it in. Well, here's the thing. I can't do Invisalign. I'm. We have a list. It gives you a list. Yeah, but I already have a little bit of a lisp, so it just is the same. I don't think you have a lisp. I do when I say like seriously, like I have this big giant lip. I have the Simpsons lip, so it makes me shoo 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 shoo. I yeah, I don't know. I had like a doctor that was basically scam. I realized every TMJ doctor is scamming you. Yeah, the TMJ sucks because the answer to TMJ is you're so f- stressed that yeah. you're clenching your teeth all day. That's why I have Invisalign is for the because I gr- I ground this up into my yeah head. yeah yeah sometimes I wake up and it, it actually like you can feel the radiating pain of that's the, what your headache well. must be yeah it's up I take muscle relaxers a hardcore muscle relaxer to it, when it gets too bad it's and, like and then everyone's like Botox I was looking on Reddit and I've actually been very good I only look at Reddit for helpful things I don't delve into the dark side of Reddit anymore I've I never have gone into Reddit. it's great you just don't even read. I just got a social media person too, so I'm it's off great. the. Great, the... I love it. It's great. It is. It's just like, can you do this for me? Yeah, it's not. I'll pay. I live in a hovel for two grand a month, and I'm like, all my money will go to clip people and yep. people to keep me off of the phone. Entirely. No, I love that. I know your clips are great. They're so good. Yeah, it's not me. And how much do you post a day? One a day? No, three times a week. Three times a week. Okay. If that. You're in my alg. It's good. Nice. I'm no, glad. it's good. No, I knew of your clips before you. Yeah, yeah, same with you. It was fun. I was obsessed with the you drawing the abs on your body. Thank you. I know. So now funny. I kind of have the abs. You got Can we talk about the Yeah. Okay, so you inject a, a semi glutide, yeah. Semi glutide. I wish I had it. I would do it here. So Ozempic you put it in your body and it makes you not hungry. It just I'm still hungry. Everyone has different side effects than me. I have no side effects. I'm just not I'm not as hungry. But I don't think hunger was really the issue. I think it just curbs that part of my head that was like obsessively eating for my feelings. So what? how does it curb that? Like what is the science? You know, I Andrew Huberman told me this. He came to one of my shows in the green room. No, he did not. Yes. He's cool. I love him. They had, there's like one picture somewhere. I'm like, can we get the picture? He came to one of your shows. He came to the green room. It was awesome. Is he short or tall? He's not short. <sighs> He's not short. He's so good. He's so hot. Sometimes he's doing the podcast and then he's like, oh, excuse that noise. That's my little bulldog. And I'm like, I will fuck you in your bulldog. He's really, he's, a, but he's boring. I mean, but it's fun. He's like excited about science. Todd, you know, I love you. Todd's editing this. Todd, she you're my man. I, on the other hand, will take Huberman. Yeah. Oh man, Todd edits this. I wonder if he ever gets sick of you. He's not sick of me. But I Doesn't will tell you sick. over the pandemic, we were, sometimes I ask him, you gotta be sick of me. Yeah. I'm like, are you just going to leave me when I'm 50 or something? Like, just be like, I'm out of here. He's like, nope. I'm like, okay. I believe you. Wow. Unless he wants, I mean, I guess he can go. I'll let him go. I'll allow it. Yeah. But it is, sometimes I'm like, is this okay the way I am? It's okay the way you are, but it is a lot of him seeing you in person. And then he's also editing. Like, I can't edit my own. He works at home too. No, when we were, during the pandemic, he, we were in, this little apartment together and there was construction all around. They were trying to get us to move out. So they just did construction in every area. We were just in a block inside of construction. And he was also editing clips for Whitney. So he was just hearing like Whitney's voice, me and construction, which was Whitney had a baby. Does that make you want to have a baby? Uh, When I can have the amount of money for the nurses. Yes, I would. It it, it makes me want to wait until I have more money. But is she stoked on the baby? She's so cute with him. She's really. She looks the best she's ever looked. She looks gorgeous. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't want it. It's a whole life. They just have a whole life. It's a whole thing, and then they're like cute for a little bit, and then it's like then they get like nine. Yeah, and And then they get nine. And it's like my niece is eleven now, and she's cute in a different way. Like she's doing makeup and stuff, and that's really cute. But she'll go like. As if, not even, like stuff like yeah. that. And it's so cute and funny. And then, but then there's going to be acne. Yeah, but then there's you can pop be... their zits, which sounds great. My mom probably, I can't believe she never did that. My brother had like a, like a scaly scalp. My mom, I just remember her peeling my brother's scalp. She loved it. That's great. I wonder if she Munchausen syndrome to him, like gave him like a weird. Oh. 
Okay, guys, look, I got one thing going for me here, and it's one skin. I am, I look young. I'm 40 years old, and I look so good, and I don't use any fillers, Botox. There's no needles near my face, just in my waist for Ozempic. But no needles, nothing. I just use one skin. It's so good. Let's not skirt around the subject anymore. We all know my skin looks amazing, and I credit it to one skin. One Skin makes incredible skincare that you're going to want to try. Their products are powered by their scientifically proven peptide called OS1, which literally reduces the accumulation of damaged and aging cells in your skin. It reverses skin's biological age. It's incredible. I feel young. I think my skin is still in their th its 30s. I wouldn't say 20s, but some audience members have. Sometimes I ask the audience, how old do I look? And they say 20s. It is dark in there and there's a light shining on my face, but I'll still take it. In a third-party clinical study, One Skin was clinically proven to strengthen the skin barrier, improve skin health markers, and diminish the visible signs of aging. Wrinkles were improved by 87% of users. What's up? What's up? 87%. That may as well be 100. Just some haters that were lying. One Skin is the world's first skin longevity company. By focusing on the cellular aspects of aging, One Skin keeps your skin looking and acting younger for longer. Get started today with 15% off using code Annie at oneskin.co. That's 15% off oneskin.co with code Annie. They'll ask you where you heard about them, support the show, and tell them Annie would sent you. Help your skin stay younger and healthier for longer with One Skin. Guys, I'm getting better at reading, too. One skin's helping my reading skills. I want to practice this hypnosis thing. I'm going to practice my... What do I want? You just decide what you want. You can get it. Okay. I uh, sit on the beach and just listen to, like, subliminals all day. But they're not subliminals. What are they saying? Some of them are Is it subliminals. Like, you, you, I listen to a lot you of different things. Skinny it's and someone basically, even they're saying it, like, low, but you can kind of hear it. That shit gives me panic attacks, though. Well, then you got to not do supplements. You got to do something else. I am going to, you know, I did kind of manifest my dog potty training itself. I believe, I honestly believe I was like, she needs to be, I basically prayed. I was like, I need her to get this because my schedule is so fucked up that if she doesn't learn how to potty train herself, I can't wake up and like get her out. She needs to learn that 1 p.m. is when we're going for the walk. And now she is potty yep. trained and she goes outside and she's like, yeah. And you forget you even asked for it until it's there and you go, oh my God, I asked for that. I know. It is kind of crazy. Back in the day, I watched The Secret when I was living in Santa Fe and I was like a go-go dancer. I was like, it's just so wasted just on a motor scooter driving around. And I really wanted, I wanted an apartment for $300 and I wanted a motor scooter. And I drew a picture of myself on a motor scooter and it, like with a $300 check for rent. And I put it in my wallet and forgot. And then I was like riding my scooter around one day. And I was like, did I draw a picture? And then I found the picture and I had the whole thing whoa it's weird and then also what, what's a go-go dancer it's like you dress slutty and dance on a podium at did a you do that yeah really yeah but i'm not a good dancer it was very it was like a tragic i was drinking i would be really wasted i had the chicken cutlets and santa fe is such a small town that they had this one club it went out of business and nothing came in its place but it was run by two gay men and so it was kind of a gay club but because there was nothing else it was just a club but so there were three podiums and it was me this stripper sometimes who was a full stripper and it was weird to be around her because she would just have pasties and people would like she was more cool with people ogling and I was like I don't know why I was like stop don't objectify me yeah I was up there I was confused. you're up on a podium don't I look at like, my body stop. Ew. I really wow. was being so crazy how old are you uh 21 and then wow. the boss says I remember going in the, like crying with like they're looking at me and he was like you don't need to come in yeah we can easily have someone else come yeah in. But they would give me 50 bucks an hour. Wow. And then the guy, I can't remember the name of the guy, the owner, but he would come over and give me like a $100 bill. And then people would tip me, but I was like, I don't want your tip. I was so confused. Oh, interesting. This is the thing with manifestation. Like if you're confused, you're going to have a weird, I just had a weird relationship to people being attracted to me and me using it. Like I just didn't know how to deal with that. Totally. Which, I know what you mean. You know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. But it's like when people are like, get an OnlyFans. I'm like, are you out of your mind? So rude. But I'm also like, right. if someone has an OnlyFans, I don't, I'm not like. I judge them. I'm judging you. I judge it too. I judge it too. If but you're it's the a comedian same as like, with an OnlyFans? It's so weird. What are you doing? It's weird. That's insane. It's are weird. you funny or are you hot? You can't be both. 
You can be both, but you can't. But hot has to be something that's so down. Because it's an accident. You have to be accidentally hot. Accidentally hot, funny. like oopsie, which I think you are. No, I, think, I will never say that about myself. But, but you, you are. are very hot. But you can't say it about yourself. I can't say it. About but it's about it's you too. No, I get the comment. I know what's going on when you're on the show. Listen to me. But they can't you help can't. themselves. They can't help themselves because there's some guys that find us disgusting. They can't believe we tell jokes. Yeah. But we don't know them because they're not near us. I unfollow anybody who, like, like people who are in comedy who have like under ten thousand followers and they post like a hot picture of themselves. You're out. Uh, the unfollow thing is, I love to do Full it. Full unfollow. Oh, I unfollow. Not There's no muting. Fuck the mute. I because I want. And here's the thing: I will follow you again if it comes around to a point where. But I like the idea of I'm energetically cutting you out. You're you're doing you're barely a comedian and you're posting a hot photo yeah. of yourself at a wedding what are you a lot talking of selfies a lot of the selfies is such a weird thing to do without anything funny in it at mm -hmm. least throw a cheeseburger in your mouth and look hot i will say i had this problem with because isa will do she's like let's just do like hot pictures of you and todd's like you have to just do hot pictures like you have to do it every once in a while just do it it's but, like just do it but yours are like show promos and yeah you fake i know abs yeah on. I know, but I tried to do a joke, but there was there was there was a one photo shoot that I was sitting on for a long time, and Issa was like, "Do you not like the photos?" I'm like, "No, they're great. It's just, it's hard to." But you have a level. There's a certain level that you can get to where they actually do want to see. That. I had like, a lot of years in hoodies, like zipped up to my. Yes, nose. you need the years in hoodies. I had a lot of years of that. I used to get so mad at open mics when they'd bring me up as a female comedian. I'm like, "Don't you dare!" It's so funny. Yeah, this next lady is not only beautiful but funny oh You're my like, god no there's man. one guy that used to bring me up at the comedy store he'd be like i would what oh, do yeah. i do to this girl and i'm like ew can what? i tell you the thing that this bothers me so much so say i get on stage and i'm like i fucked a guy in a attic right and then i get off stage and the host gets on and he's like well i didn't know it was an attic yeah you know what so i mean annoying. i dude what are you how is that appropriate that you're insinuating that i fucked right. you? and they also so don't weird. understand that people might think that that was it's it's like it just you would never like I have one about my stepbrother and every host gets on stage after me and goes, you know, I'm her stepbrother. And I'm like, you don't get to do you don't get to co-op my life. They're just piggybacking. They're just they're just like piggies. piggy hacking. Yeah. Yeah. They're just doing anything they can it to get me. a laugh. I know, but it is annoying. It's just. Yeah. There was this one married. He goes, if I wasn't married and I was like, like I would fuck you. Yeah. What did he, it was like, if my wife was dead, that's what he said, I go, I go, if you were dead, or if I was dead, <laughs> maybe, I went, dead. I went, if I was dead, maybe you could f*** me. I'm like, there's only one option here. It's just, there is this insinuation that they could f*** us, it's annoying. Yeah. But Todd told me this, Todd was like, every, even open micer thinks they can f*** all of you. There's just a confidence that these guys, they're just like, they think there's a chance. Is Todd a jealous guy? No. Damn, I love jealousy. I, I live for it. I like being jealous, but I gave up on Todd. Nobody's in his DMs. It's just his mom. It's so I check his phone all the time. I'm like, come on. Wow. I can't check the phone. I always find something awful. Anything. Oh, I found really dark things. Really? In the past? Things that were like, Annie's so boring. No, no. Call me boring. With exes, not with Todd. No, exes, yeah. Okay. No, there's nothing with Annie's Todd. so boring is brutal. It's the That's worst worse thing I'm than cheating. ever. Exactly. That's worse than cheating. What was also like, I can't wait to come win you back. I'm saving up money. And I was like paying for rent. I was like. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, you've had So it. I stayed for a while. I had it where I was doing comedy. so And I had this job where I was going to weed farm. And I sent my boyfriend instead. And then this woman, another farmer showed up. And I was like, I think you're going to f*** that girl. And they f*** that girl a whole bunch. And I had his car and was changing his oil. And I was like, what oil do you take? And he was like being weird. And I was like, well, what's going on? And he was like, well, I fucked that girl. And I was like, all right, well, I'm not going to get your oil changed. And that was like my big fuck you is that I didn't change the oil yeah, on his car. Yeah, but you stayed with him? No. Oh, I, you broke up with him? Good. I broke, yes, I, I broke up with him. It was, I did a good thing that time where I said, don't talk to me for six months. Mm. Because if I don't set that, if I don't do that, then I'm immediately back in it. Well, I love a block, a block of an ex. And it's not because of them. It's not like to punish them. It's like, because I don't want to go checking I'm a, yeah, I'm such a check. I don't want to keep going back. You're just like reopening the wound. Yeah, the social media thing is also the key. I mean, you have to get block on everything. Even like Venmo will pop up, and I'm like, Yeesh, what are you doing? I still my Venmo will show me when my ex boyfriend like sends his wife rent. Which, by a, the way, I'm like, oh, still haven't have your wife pay for your shit. That's crazy. Still, I'm like, oh, something's never changed. Yeah, but it's so weird. I'm like, why am I connected? I don't because we don't they keep us connected, so you stay on the phone. It's insane. It's so fucked up. 
they'll be I'll be like, why all of a sudden is the Instagram story of my ex friend coming up on the little circle yeah. that I've never seen? And it's like I click it and he's in it. I'm like, you are an asshole. Yeah. His algorithm is insane. It's no, I, I have borderline. people blocked, blocked, blocked for a long time. Yeah, that's good. You don't even remember they're blocked. That's incredible. But then you see them, you go, and you still feel energetically blocked. I go, one of my ex-boyfriends, when he talks to me, I'm like. The guy that I'm dating now, his phone number comes up as his name or delete because he's in my phone. He's been in my phone as both his name and the word delete. So they're like, it could be delete. Yeah, it's up to you. And I'm always like, yeah, that's crazy. We'll see. Well, when you guys break up, are you always knowing you're going to get back together? Or do you think it's forever? I mean, I'm very like abandonment based. So I'm like, this is forever. And I, I, yeah, I, I go crazy and I get really sad. And then I, you know, get over it. Do you get more annoying when they're ignoring you? Or do you back oh, off? Oh, yeah. Yeah, me too. I get so annoying. So then I have to cut myself off and I have to like do all the blocking stuff. And then we end up getting back together and. Some of my friends have been kind of ghosting me recently, and it's, I know I hate it. Because of Trash Tuesday? No, that's so funny. What would it be? No, I think, like, two of my friends are having, like, deaths in the family, so there's, like, a lot of trauma going on, and I don't, and they're people I talk to, like, every day, so I'm, like, I'm, I'm wanting to make myself available if they want to talk, but not. Just, just write, hey, just check it in. Yeah, but then they don't write back, and I'm, like. They do something, and I don't even know if there's the death because it was just there was someone that was sick, oh. so I don't know. But then I'm like, I'm always like, did I do something wrong? I try to be very self aware, I've been but I could be annoying. But then I'm like, am I just so annoying? Because then I'm like, hey, are you? You're and it's not also annoying. A habit. Are you annoying? I don't find you annoying. When we text, you have a perfect text banter. You have a perfect amount of text, and then we. Did you think I called you too soon when I found? No, I found it was great. I yet. loved it. And I was, you were like, I got to go on stage. And I was like, Dad, ah, right yet? Is it like you're on deck or you're yeah, about to yeah, go on? Yeah. I'm like, I'm not done. No, I don't find you annoying. Some people I do find very annoying. Yeah. I do. I do find the, I find the text and then the immediate FaceTime call annoying. Yeah. I, I caught mean, my dog trying to FaceTime my friend the other day and I was like, you're a traitor. So funny. And I love a FaceTime. You don't like FaceTiming? I don't. I John have friends Kennedy I never FaceTime. loves FaceTiming. And yeah. I will FaceTime with John Kennedy because... Every time we do it, it is so hilarious. But typically, it becomes me obsessing over the way I look in the FaceTime, and I can't focus on what they're saying. It's yeah, the you're same like, with... I need full hair and makeup before this happens. Yeah, it's the same with like therapy over Zoom. I'm like, this is giving me more need for therapy. It is. I do have to realize when I'm looking at myself or the. I know, the and I, you can see when somebody's looking at themselves or them. You know or what you. I've been doing? What? I've been taking my my appointments at the beach. Wow, it's crazy, but. I did notice when I had my, I did my hypnotherapy on the beach the other day and my therapist was small and I was big and I went, oh my God, you're small. This is crazy. And oh. I had to make her big. I was like, oh my God, is that me? Is it, are you doing somatic therapy? No. What's hypnotherapy? Hypnotherapy is my hypnotist, Mary Lou Rodriguez. Check her out. Mary Lou hypnotizes you on Instagram. She um, the most LA thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> she doesn't even live in LA. Really? But it is very LA. How do you do it over the phone? She do you does see a it, psychic? Um, I see my ayahuasca shaman reads my cards. Okay. My, and it's kind of but he always, the thing that sucks is he will be honest and he he'll read like the year so he'll read the months and I'll be like oh you're gonna have some trouble in this month with something and I'm like. Because I believe in hypnosis where I'm like, I just want to assume I'll never have trouble with anyone ever. I don't think you should get those cards read anymore. This is like if I had a terminal illness, I wouldn't want to know. I would want to live my life. But I also life. believe with terminal illness, you could like, I mean, I don't, not 100%, but you can kind of like live a life as though you're not. Well, not If you don't so. know. Yeah, if you don't know. That's what I'm saying. I don't want to know. I don't want to know any of the bad stuff. When people, if, I, if somebody's like, if I'm in a relationship, I'm like, if you cheat and want to stay with me, don't tell me. I think like with the tarot cards, I always, I'm usually at a very weak time where I want to know answers. Yeah. And I only like them if it's good answers. I mean, there's still like a lot of good stuff. Yeah. In the reading. But yeah, I feel I have a lot of, I do a lot of things. I have like hypnotherapy. I have this other girl who's like a timeline ther uh, guide or something. So she's kind of a hypnotherapist too. This is chick, Abby, who... But she gives me the, sub the subliminals. Okay. But I don't know if they feel like, I don't know if my hypnotherapist would feel competitive with 
But I'm seeing her too. Like I almost feel like I'm cheating on her. Oh, wow. So it's subliminal and hypnotherapy. Right. So the hypnotherapy is we do a Zoom. It's like, what are my blocks? What am I working on? So if it's like my special, what's going, why am I not? Why have I not done my special? What am I feeling? What's like the underlying feeling in this that's making me not do my special? Which is, I would say my biggest fear is that my jokes are not finished and I will put out like a first draft Uh, is what I feel. But don't you have so many years of dead material that you're I do and I never have felt like my joke. I mean, there's like two jokes that I feel like are finished. Really? I always, because I say it different every time. Because you're a rambler. You just ramble. ramble. Yeah, totally. I'm a rambler too. But you just got to ramble. And then, and then the by the way, I think it keeps me from, because it's not that I do the same hour, but it is like the same areas. And I do feel done with those areas. So I do think just energetically, I need to get the special out so I can just have all the new yeah, stuff same. come out. You have, you're pretty prolific though. I'm tr- I'm trying to crank stuff, but that's because I get sick of it, and I'm like on to the next thing. And I can't lie, really. Like I can't be on stage and say I'm single if I'm not. Right. I can't be on stage and say that I'm in a space that I'm. I have to say exactly what's going on. I know it's hard, and it's. I don't feel like I don't relate as much to my jokes anymore. Oh yeah, when interesting. Like, I'm not. I've evolved away from. Yeah. What I was when I wrote this, and that makes you sleepy before getting on stage because you know that you're about to have to recite some. Yes. And you don't want to And then I'm recite. chugging Red Bulls like a psychopath. Chugging Red Bulls, dude. Chugging them. In the, in the, in the people are, the openers watching you and they're like, is that three sugar free Red Bulls like, down? Yeah. And then my jaw is like, I'm like, why can I sleep? I yeah. have to take my mouth shut when I sleep. Do you yeah. remember this? The sleep apnea stuff? I don't have like, I'm not diagnosed sleep apnea, but I will wake, it's my mouth is fully open while I sleep. I wake up <sighs> crushing boulders in my yeah. jaw. And yeah, I will say my sleep has gotten a lot better with the puppy. The, it's it is angelic she goes right to snuggle town waking up with my dog spooning into my arm i mean it's just really it's unbelievable yeah it's, it's just crazy. a way to wake up what a way it's so crazy. and todd too like i really do i i wake up i have randy and then i'm like oh, i also have todd it's like very nice i know that's starting to freak me out a little bit i've never had dog and guy at the same it's time a lot. and it's a lot it's a lot of love it's a lot i was dealing with it this morning and i was just like and my and my puppy was like we got a new mattress so it's like Comfy, yeah so i'm waking up in like such comfort and then the beach is like really making me feel peaceful but comedically it's hard not like i'm still coming up with ideas and stuff but i'm so tired by the time i get to the sets because i think it's like calibrating me to have a regular sleep i know pattern. i know i feel like i've been going to the park with the dog and have the personal trainer and i'm taking care of myself and now when i go to a set i'm like i'm not jacked up on three hours of sleep and eight cups of coffee and I don't really have the energy to make this drunk piece of shit like me. Yeah. I just want to go home. Yeah. It's really weird. But then if I'm doing a club that's like sick and the people are great. But when I'm in like a dog shit place and they're all just like, you know, just wasted and went pre-gaming before yeah. the show. There's a part of me that's like, I need to get out of this echelon of comedy and that's into. But you know what? Brother. This will make you feel. This is crazy. I went to see Zach Bryan. You know, Zach mm-hmm. Bryan. Yes. And. I went to go see him and in so I always get really does depressed. he know you no I okay know. I know his girlfriend the barstool girl mm-hmm. yeah I just randomly got Joey Dardano was like you want this ticket and I was like I love Zach Bryan let's he's go amazing Bruce Springsteen dropped in oh Crazy. my god but then I always get really bummed out when drunk people yell stuff out right it makes you feel really demeaned right. and really sad so this is Barclays arena and while he's talking about his grandmother uh, his grandfather a woman a man yells out um who cares and i was like okay so even like one of the biggest musicians playing an arena it has the drunk piece yes. of shit. you know what i mean like it's yeah. not just that i'm in a funny bone in, yeah. in omaha and somebody's you know what i mean yeah like it just ha- people are just awful. but also you want them to be a little awful you don't want people that are just like yay at everything you say sometimes sometimes i do when i'm tired yeah when I, it becomes a job it is weird it's like not a job and then everyone's in a while, like this is a in the job yeah i mean i don't mind that at the cellar where they don't know who i am and it's just a lineup and i'm like it's time it's time for me to spend 15 right. minutes winning you over but when i'm doing an hour and they're like hey you're not totally sold out we'll paper it there's a part of me it's like don't you fucking dare i don't want anybody in here who's gonna be like, i love a paper pander really? i love pandering to the papers i love being like i'm gonna get these fucking old florida pieces of shit like me i'm not even kidding i know i can and it's like and i'm not gonna change who i am i'm gonna just i'm gonna That's pretzel great. myself a little bit but i'm like i i like it but I realized I used to hate performing to older people and then the shitty old people died. And now old people are cool. I love old people. Old people are cool But I hate now. the young 
22 year olds who are blacked out it's bad and who they're like you say something and they're like they're so offended yeah or that you say something and they're like so drunk that they're just like yeah girl get it you know what i mean like they're like being trying to think they're helpful but they're just blacked out i had a college girl like sit me down and be like break down why one of my jokes was like racist towards mexicans and i was like that's the funny part that's crazy like what do you want me to I know. not I tell love a joke? the dms that are like hey just wanted to let you know that this thing that you said is problematic like, yeah you think me saying the n-word was bad okay <laughs> yeah but it's also like i would ra- i want to like say that's what i want to do more of like i think even though i am pretty outspoken and say what i, I think i do hold back a little bit that's what i'm working on in my hypnosis that's because of your that's because of your city i've learned that in la is that all my friends in la when i'm in la they're a little bit like we're trying to like on podcasts they'll kind of be like shh, 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 a little bit with me and then they get to new york and they're like god damn Mexicans. The are you guy- <laughs> garbage guys are the most um pc really friend new york to- talky when i did their podcast i was shocked yeah i was trying to talk shit on someone that's so easy to talk shit on but it's like come on of course we're all gonna talk shit on this person matt rife no it wasn't matt rife but i'll tell you who offs okay off. okay because <laughs> she's got some personality disorders um but it was such an easy one to talk to. And they were like, we don't. And I was like, oh, God, you guys are going to be so successful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. I'm like, I came back to New York to talk my shit. Well, when I first moved to LA, it was crazy. I would just say like very basic, almost hacky lines to people. Like Sam Tripoli was going before me. And I went, I went, can you not walk the audience like you always do? And I just said it so funny. It was just like right when he was going up. It's like such a good time to say it. And then like three days later, he DM'd me. and was like, do people say that? I'm like, what? I remember going like, what are you talking about? Oh my God. I would say that to any human that went before me. It's nice doing work in LA though, because if you crush there, you can take it. And it's the audiences are easier. Yeah. But it's also like if you can, because they are easier because you say anything shocking, they're like, the holy shit, we haven't heard this. Yeah. But then there's also, you just don't want to turn into an Austin comic. That's just not what you want to do. You don't want to get edgy in an Austin way. You don't want to say. No, I'm just saying it's wild. It's crazy. It's Literally, wild. Literally, I went to Austin and heard a comic go on stage and and say that he wishes he was a woman so he could beat up gay people. And I was like, and everybody was like, Wah! It's very weird what's happening. It's so, I was literally like, just like, one, like, like, if, if, like, Brian Holtzman, like, looks normal there. Like, the whole, yeah. do you know who Brian Holtzman is? No. He's like, he's always been like, basically the edgiest community you know and that's like his thing and a scream and people walk out and stuff but it's like he looks like normal there there's a comedian that i hate so much who did our podcast we deleted the episode but he said that he get, he goes on the podcast and he goes yeah eight out of or eight out of ten women who are raped come and i was like that's and he didn't say it as a joke and i was like oh yeah so the zeitgeist there is not only just like pushing the envelope to be funny it is like it is information yeah it's like completely ridiculous it was and i was like oh it's just stupid well they have to be like it's gr- so fun here like they they're in a world of like we love the climate it's like you don't love the climate yeah Texas. everyone's like it's the coolest place to live i'm like your pipes burst you're freezing or you're like sweating it's i mean i get it for tax reasons and stuff like that yeah. but it is just it probably is a lot of fun now that chains there i know he brought and a good voice. crew yeah, yeah. I know. I'm curious about it. I'm going to do the creek soon. Yeah. I want to do mothership, but I do not want to do the thing where you go and you do a set and then they see I'm not I'm just I'm like, I, yeah. I'll do creek. Rebecca's always taking care of me. Yeah. Then go and be like, maybe have. Am I am I allowed here? I don't like that feeling. It feels really bad. Are yeah. you going to go to the cellar party? Oh, yeah. Tomorrow? Tuesday? Yeah. Yes. I never auditioned there. Why? I just never did. Oh, you don't need to. You're not here enough. Yeah, but I never did. Well, when you're here for an extended period of time, tell me, and you know what I mean? But it sucks to just like audition, get it, and then go back to LA forever. Yeah, but it sucks to audition. No, it's five minutes in front of a great crowd. It's easy. Like when I got, are you past the comedy store? I'm, I do shows there, but I'm not, I never auditioned. I'm sure you'll just get like a random, where they're like, we passed her. Like they always, (laughs) it's always like, oh. Yamanika's pat. You're like, oh, okay. Like, yeah. Just like a random. Yamanika is maybe my favorite. Yeah, I'm so funny. Dude. Did she... you see her on last week? No. With Marina? What happened? There was like, they were like fighting over. She... Yam said like, 
that she has a black Karen friend. And then Marina's like, I'm working on a bit about that. Like, and Yam's like, is your bit about a, a your friend who calls you black Karen? <laughs> yeah. It was funny. It was good drama. She's so funny. Yeah, she was hilarious. talking about she was like talking about Lizzo's backup dancer and that whole thing. And I just remember dying because she goes on stage and she goes, she's like, how are you gonna tell how are you gonna tell fat how are you gonna hire a fat bitch to be a fat bitch and then you're gonna tell fat bitch not to be a fat bitch no more? And I was just <laughs> losing my mind. She Yam used to knit on stage. That's great. Now she, she used jewels. To... Now she jewels, which I love. <laughs> well, I was that was what was fun about vaping. I would vape on stage. I know, but I hate the way that I hate posting a clip where there's a vape in my hand. I feel like such a deadbeat. Piece I of love doing it. I love vaping at people. I go, you'll get kicked out if you do it. I get to do it in your face. I'm an artist. Like I love the letting Dominance. the audience know. I wish I had any sort of. I, if it were up to me, I would do. I, you know that guy who has a puppet who hides behind the wall. That's how I would do comedy. Ooh. Yeah. No, I saw a clip of you trying to hide, and there was nowhere to hide. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. I hate it. I know that because I can just on stage. I'm like, I know that I'm gonna have to see myself right now doing this. I brought a woman on stage last night. That was bizarre. I've been going off the rails. You ever just get so di dissociated that? You're yeah. Like, I just go look. We're gonna we're gonna see where this goes. Yeah. We're gonna yes end. We're gonna improv this. Yeah. Yeah. I wish sometimes that I could be a person who's like, here's my set joke, start to finish. It will be like this and I will know how it will go. And then I will rest for eight to nine. And then hours. I'll put out a special that everyone loves yeah. and, and it's perfect. And I'm always like, I can't even imagine. I can't imagine. Maybe that's what we need to imagine. Yes. Just having a super polished, super polished set. Tonight, that's my goal. My set is going to be polished yeah. somehow. But don't you have ADD too? Like, I'm like, yeah. if something happens. I'm like, I what am I going to not? And I feel like a liar if I don't acknowledge it. Well, what if we do this? What if we're like, I will allow for two ADHD offshoots yeah. and then it will go back yeah. in? Yeah. Because if we just say to ourselves that it will have this coherent thing, then we can do it. But right yeah. now it's like, I mean, I, I also don't want to prepare. No, but you don't have to prepare because they're in your head. The jokes right, are in your head. They're already there. So if you just say, I'm going to move seamlessly through these jokes. Yeah. That's what we should try and do. I feel like, yeah, with my special, one of the things that's keeping me from doing it is that I don't, I do think there needs to be a through line and yeah. I kind of have an idea what it is, but I would have to literally sit and like look at everything. My problem is, is I have a through line that's so substantial right now that it ends up being like, I need to record this because I can't insert other stuff into this right. because the through line is so hardcore. Yeah. Cause the through line right now is all about how being a woman is it's ridiculous. And it's like, all, just about being a masculine woman and everybody just being like well you're a lesbian or yeah. you know all these things and um so now i can't like interject things about like you know i have a joke right now i'm trying about like hitting your kids or about like black people being loud or something and it yeah. doesn't go into the you would have to be like as like a women can be karens and right, they say right. that black yes. people are loud or yeah i refuse to say karen though on stage i think it's yeah i hate look it. at my shirt <gasps> I thought it was corn, it's but it's cool, Karen. Right? That's awesome. That's really yeah, that's good. Syndicate. That's good. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I won't say Karen and I won't say January 6th. Yeah. Those are air fuse. That's so funny. Yeah. Who's been in Austin? Yeah, that's Austin. Yeah, I feel like I don't I don't hear too much of January 6th in uh LA. Oh, it's everywhere here. I know I look like I'm in January 6th. Yeah. It was a January 6th. Yeah. Yeah. I know, I just did it in a clip. Did you? Not on stage, but I was in D.C. And I was going to all the monuments and stuff, and I was showing my tits, and I was saying it was boobs out for Biden. And then I was naming my boobs. I was being like, I think this is where Forrest Gump was. This is Jenny, and this is has AIDS, and this is like, and I was just doing like naming my boobs. And then um, I was in front of the Capitol building. I was like, I haven't been here since January 6th. This is Zip, and this is Ty. That's good. But it was, I, you know. You're well, you know, you can't it. go to the Capitol. No. You, you can't can, go to the Capitol. That's you way different. That's walking into the thing that is. I have a friend who has a joke about actually January 6th, like the thing that happened. And mm -hmm. that's fine with me. It's that when people walk on stage and they go, I look like you know January where, Yeah. Yeah. I look like all the I look like a jokes are. I look like I look like um uh January 6th. And I don't like um I feel like I'm giving a TED talk. I feel like I'm giving a TED talk. Yes. That's overused. And then there was another one that was in the Louis phase. Everybody was saying. As if you matter, that you know that person doesn't matter. Matter was a big one. Nightmare. I try and avoid nightmare. Yeah. That you're. This is a nightmare. It's overused. Yeah. It's tough. You are watching people's sets. I don't watch many people's sets. I'm super competitive. 
Mm. So if somebody's crushing, I will not, I will stop talking to the person I'm talking to and be like, what's going on? I'm always confused. I always don't understand. Yes. I, yeah. But totally. that could be an LA thing. Cause sometimes you're just like, what? Yeah. LA is so different. It's crazy. I like, love Whoa. watching people sets in LA because it is so yeah. different than New York. In New York, it is just like tweets, tweet, tweet, yeah. tweet, tweet perfectly, you know? And then in LA, it's like way more experimental. I, yeah, no, I used to be crazy. When Brody died, Brody Stevens killed himself, and I was like, I went, I'm going to do whatever I want on stage. I started bringing a toy sword on stage. Yeah. Because I would like, go up so late, and I would just smack the, I just was like, maybe I'm a prop comic, who knows? Yeah. It was so weird. I remember Adam Egan being, remember your sword stage? I was like, shut the f*** up. That's shut fun. Shut the f*** up. I had, a, I had a phase of bringing a small figurine on stage, mm. a little like a small animal to be there was it like a it was like a adhd thing yeah a fidget a i used fidget. to bring fidget spinner on stage that's why cool. i have it instead of botox that's good and then i had my vape i said the same thing see yeah the jokes they can keep going regardless i want your special to come out yeah maybe okay maybe i can have you watch my set and tell me if it's good or not yeah is it an hour it'll be an hour yeah and the, do you know where you're going to shoot? I just feel like I'm going to I'm going to shoot in LA. Here's the thing. I just feel like I would be sad if I when I did see my special I went, "Oh my god, that was like road filler." Oh. I want to just make sure I'm not just putting out a special to put out a special. Why don't you just dedicate 6 months to to every single time you're on the, This is what I've been doing with this with the hour is instead of dicking around, I'm like one show I'll dick around and one show I'm like, there's the hour. And then the next right. show I'll dick around and then yeah. there's the hour. Yeah, I know. Cause I do, the first show has to be dick around because I am too tired. And you have to, yeah, we're so tired from traveling. We feel insane. It is actually going to be a problem though. When we're doing just theaters, we're not going to have dick like around. a f around episode or yeah, show. I know. But even when I, I just opened for Segura and it was arenas and there was a little dick around moments. Yeah, because you kind of, what, are you going to not be You got to dig around a little bit. Yeah. I know. Was that fun? I mean, it was so fun. It it's made, weird, yeah, never, too. It's like crazy. I've never done an arena. It's crazy because you're in the round, and I'm not yeah. used to people seeing my full body. So yeah. I'm like trying to cover myself up while yeah. everybody is around. It's crazy. And you have to move in a circle. It was nuts. And also that you, it's like I can get an hour worth of material in 20 minutes because I talk so fast. Yeah. But this, you have to like say a joke and then it's like, wave wait for what. them to laugh. It's crazy. And yeah. I was like, all right, I'm doing five minutes of material. And also you feel like, <laughs> yeah, like, oh, laugh. Yeah, I'm waiting. I'll wait. Yeah, totally. It's I'll bizarre. Wait. But it was so fun. I do think I step, maybe it is like a low self-esteem thing. I feel like I'm being too cocky or something. If I wait too long Me too. during laughs, I start talking again. It's like I'm uncomfortable. They're laughing. But we, it's because we've watched comics who sit in the laugh and we're like, like wow. yeah. It's the best when people like if you see David Tell's special, of course, yeah. he says a joke and then he's just like, Wah! and he like will rush over the last. Like, I'm a Biden guy, Hunter. Yeah, it's like so that was perfect. I that's exactly when I saw that part, I was like, Man. it's like so perfect. Like oh, simple. Why is perfect. nobody ever said that? He just that. always is like perfect. It's so good. I know he's so funny, so sweet. I don't know. I have to go buy high heels. I don't even know how to do that. It's hard. I don't know what. I don't know how to do it. Sam Edelman is the most comfortable heels I've ever worn. I know. Worn. That's why I was told. I'm just going to get tan? Show me the dress. I'll show you right now. It's so hard. I, I For my 36th birthday, or my 26th birthday, I quit. Tan? Heels. I'm going to get into heels. So pretty. Um, it's a great dress. Thank you. Um, gold... And I don't know what they're going to have. What's in season? I don't know. I mean, I would still try to get boots, but it would be wrong. I can't do boots with that, I don't think. It would be wrong, but I would still do it. It's just, I, I don't want to be uncomfortable. I mean, I could do cloggy. Yeah, cloggy platform. Yeah. Don't do clogged platform. But, but like the... It would be more comfortable. Okay. There's, it can't be a round part of your toes. There's no round. Don't can't put do a round. round. Don't do a round. Please? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I can't even walk in heels. I don't, yeah, I, my heels hurt so bad when I wear them. I actually, I had one pair of boots that I really liked that were platform boots, but my feet hurt so bad. I was with Whitney Cummings was, had like a strip club phase, which was so fun. Yeah. 
she was just giving us all what she pulled out a case, briefcase filled with like wads of ones and was like go for it and just giving us money it was very fun that's so fun but she had a party bus yeah. that took us to the strip club and my feet hurt so bad i left my heels in the party bus wow you went to a strip club barefoot no no i i knew ahead of time it was gonna hurt so i had flats or sneakers yeah or i'm definitely bringing sneakers and the she didn't have it the whole night so it just my stuff was just taken so i just lost my boots what do you mean she didn't the have the party bus was not I, I was like Whitney oh, you're slipping no. I thought she like owned the party bus I'm like Whitney do you own this person wow that's driving this that's so really now I have cool. no heels I have nothing so on tour she would do that it was no it was for her one of the OnlyFans rows she did yeah she did like I think it was it was the one for her because I was on it yeah or maybe it was the Burt one and she yeah she took us all to a strip club. it was very fun that's so fun but strip clubs are weird for me because I don't I'm like, I sometimes I get I just really like, uncomfortable. I go, well, also, I think we're accused of being lesbians a lot, too. So yeah. maybe there's that. Yeah. And I'm not going to touch. I have OCD. I'm not touching a dirty skank. Yeah. I, and also, I'm like, do you want this? I can't tell if they want I mean, I was there. on mushrooms at the last trip club. Me, I was too. At, and I was balling them up and throwing them on stage. And Ian was like, you can't do that. That's okay. That's rude. so funny. I was on mushrooms at the strip club and I was like, this is the wrong drug. I was like, it was freaking me out. I was looking into their lives and being no, like, I, I need to help you. I, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what I was doing. And I was like, oh, my God. And I always try to, when I'm on mushrooms, not think about my parents. And then I'm thinking about their parents. I'm yeah. just thinking about parents. Mushrooms are always very parenty for me. And then I'm like, I was. I was just handing them. I was going, do you just want this? Like, I would just hand them like Yeah, a just stack. take it. Yeah. Do you want it? It's crazy. And they'll put their little butt in your and face. Todd and Todd was like, you throwing, don't, need to do I, that. don't clap your ass. And then Todd was throwing the money down. And I was like, I think you have to throw it up. Like, and they catch it. I don't Todd think is they like catch it like dogs. I think you tuck it in their body. I think, I think they it. like it. Th they like this. But I'm like, go up. He was going down. I was like, don't disrespect. Oh, down is not. Yeah, you. But they do. like being dis. I don't know. I just don't know. I was bawling from a distance, hiding behind T.J. Miller, who's a wall of a man, and whipping it at the stage like that. Is he fun at a strip club? He's so he's fun all the time. Yes, he he's really the best. He's Where's my the favorite. booger? He was like the. He was cast as the voice of the booger and the, or was it the. Mucinex. Mucinex. Oh yeah, yeah, Isn't that yeah. So such a dream job. That's so cool. That's crazy. The voice of the booger. Yeah. Yeah, he's a king. He's the best. I love him. Do you? Is there anything you want to plug? When comes it come out, out on Thursday. When um, does yours come out? Your episode. You gotta ask the producer. I have no idea. Okay. Um, I am. You can go to punchup dot live slash Jordan Jensen for my shit, but um. I'm going to be at Governor's uh, in Levittown, April 12th through 13th. Portland, Oregon, April 25th. Denver, Colorado, Los Angeles, Wilmington. Are you uh, doing Netflix as a joke? Yeah. Texas. And then some... Oh, the Bell House, Poughkeepsie. Yeah, so on my Instagram, Jordan Jensen, LOL, stop. You can see all my dates there, too. What are you doing at the festival headlining? Yeah. What room? The big room, I think, at the Improv. Thank you, Jordan Jensen. I'll see you Yes. I'll see you 6.30, great. We really do. We love each other. It's the meat and potatoes. Welcome to Annie Wood. This is the land of the stannies, annies, and fannies, and all of the sleeping nannies, yeah. Welcome to Annie Wood. This is the land of the stannies, annies, and fannies, and all of the sleeping nannies. I'm going up by Oscar. I'm about to prosper. Blingy on my drinky, and Randy is living proper. Protector of the sick, she'd never let her fishes die. Never known to tell a lie, she even fixed Todd's eyes. Shout out to the slugs, shout out Woody's too. Shout out SD and Kalila and the Annie Wood crew. Cause this is Annie Wood, you know that this is how I'm living. Real and never pretending shit, you know that this is a gift. Welcome to Annie Wood. This is the land of the Stannies, Annies, and Fannies, and all of the Sipa Nannies.